If, like me, you're growing light-loving, heavy-fruiting annuals indoors, then you need a way of supplying them with lots of plant-usable light, especially as they grow larger and approach maturity. The vast majority of indoor growers turn to high-pressure sodium lamps in order to supply the bulk of the photons their plants need during flowering. More recently, however, double-ended HPS lamps have arrived to offer increased lumen maintenance, better spectral quality, and higher efficiency than their single-ended predecessors. So it's worth seriously considering making an upgrade. When it comes to choosing a double-ended reflector, you have plenty of options. First important point, it doesn't have to burst your budget. In fact, you don't even have to spend more than 100 bucks. For instance, you can buy a brand new Sun System Flex DE reflector which creates a wide but balanced and uniform light pattern. It comes pre-assembled and is super lightweight so it's easy to hang. There's also a 15 foot cable included and while this is fairly standard, it's worth checking that this will be sufficient to connect it to your light ballast. Now, open reflectors are very simple to install in a grow room, but a 1000 watt DE lamp still generates a lot of heat, just like me. So if you go the open route, you'll be limited to HPS lamps as most double-ended metal halide lamps are designed to be operated in a closed reflector, that is, behind a glass panel. Closed reflectors are designed to have air blown through them to keep them cooler, so you need an extraction fan and ducting. The hot air exiting the fixture is then vented directly out of your indoor garden. I definitely recommend avoiding any closed DE fixture which allows air to pass directly over the lamp. That's because DE lamps are filled with nitrogen, which is a poor insulator, meaning the DE lamps are especially susceptible to being overcooled. This leads to reduced output and increased energy consumption and wear and tear. Bear this in mind, if you're considering converting an existing reflector to take double-ended lamps with a double-ended socket and cord conversion kit, don't convert air-cooled reflectors where air passes directly over the lamp. As far as converting open reflectors, the only one I'd recommend converting is the adjust wing. Also, note that converting hoods may well void all UL and ETL safety certifications. <laughs> Just be careful. Now, the way to go when choosing air cooling DE lamps is to choose a hood with a sealed optic chamber, one which cools the convection heat rather than the lamp itself, such as this ACDE reflector. You can see how the cooling chamber is actually above the lamp. Your garden stays cooler thanks to the removal of the convection heat, but the lamp itself is not cooled. Next, let's talk ballasts. Integrated ballasts, that is. These are the ballasts that are built directly into the lighting fixture itself and they run more efficiently as there are much shorter cables involved. You simply plug them directly into your lighting controller. This Gavita Pro E-Series is popular with larger growers who want to illuminate large spaces with compound lighting plans. That is, lots of light raised up high with overlapping footprints. It can run on 120 or 240 volt power, but if you're planning on going the 120 route, make sure you buy a cord because only the 240 volt cord is included. You can also go the integrated route while still benefiting from the air cooling with the ACDE Fusion. The high frequency ballast is located inside the cooling chamber itself, so the electronics benefit from being cooled as well as the fixture. Now finally, you should definitely pay attention to the durability and reflectivity of materials used in the reflector. Look for at least 95% reflectivity. Gavita claimed that reflectivity can degrade by up to 5% per year and they also supply replacement inserts. Meanwhile, the guys who actually manufacture the PVD aluminum warranty it for 25 years. My recommendation for hobby growers is just to clean them regularly with a vinegar solution and soft non-abrasive cloths. Okay, I'll finish up here. Let me know what your preferred double-ended reflector is and why. And if you're still wondering which one is right for you, feel free to post a question in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, amigos, this is Everest out.